Hey guys, so today's video is again going to be one of the more technical kind and it's basically about flight times. So as you probably know, I have been working on these very light long range setups like the micro long range or the Flywoo Explorer for a while and the main characteristic or main selling point of those is the very long flight time and what I'll try to explore in this video is where this long flight time is coming from, what uh, the sort of technical design decisions are that enable these long flight times and um, I'd like to do a little experiment to actually prove that the flight times are actually longer and how much longer they are because I have a very little a uh, very interesting little comparison um, between the mini long range, this is my ultralight 5 inch long range setup, and this here, the Ishin LAL3. Now, why is this an interesting comparison? Um, so, first of all, they are quite similar in terms of components. Um, Cadex Vista 20x20 stack, frame construction is actually also a little bit similar, both uh, dead cats with the TPU front here, but most interestingly they do weight roughly the same, uh, 208 grams for the mini long range, 187 grams for the Ishin, so roughly the same weight and also very interestingly roughly the same uh, motor size. So. Not in terms of uh, the actual stator dimensions, these are 1408s and these are 2004s, but the stator volume is actually pretty much the exact same. Uh, both roughly um, 5 centimeters cube, plus minus 2%, so they are indeed pretty much the same stator volume, but very different um, sort of geometries and configuration between these two. So it will be very interesting to go into the field, run these two on the exact same 3000 mAh 4S lithium ion batteries and see how much flight time we actually gain through the sort of configuration that is geared more towards efficiency uh, versus this more classical 3 inch configuration for roughly the same weight and same um, stator volume in terms of size of the motors, or weight of the motors. Now. Where do the efficiency gains come from? And I would say, I mean, I don't have exact numbers here. Um, these things are hard to to uh, sort of bench test um, because, I mean, real life is different than a bench test. So I don't know exactly, you know, how many percent I'm gaining with uh, which measure exactly, but I know it adds up to, adds up to quite a lot. But from my... Um, um, and my hypothesis for the moment is most of the flight time increase between uh, such a classic 3-inch setup and such a light 5-inch setup of the same weight is coming from the bigger prop discs. So we do have 5-inch props versus 3-inch props. That's an increase of the prop diameter of 67%, but... I mean, which doesn't sound huge, so 67% bigger prop diameter, but the actual surface area of the prop disc is proportional to the radius or the diameter squared. So we have a surface increase of 278%, so quite substantial. We have almost three times the prop area. This means with one revolution of the prop, keeping everything else constant and oversimplifying things a bit, we can, in theory, move more air. Which means we do not have to spin the props as fast. And as a general rule of thumb, I mean, it oversimplifies things quite a bit, um, but it, it works for uh, our intents and purposes. As a general rule of thumb, a larger, slower spinning prop is going to be more efficient relative to a small, fast spinning prop. This is where, in my opinion, most of the efficiency gains will come from. Second factor is also related to the props. So if you look at these props here, these are Gemfan 5125s, and these are Ishin in-house 3-inch uh, props. Look similar to I mean, maybe Gemfan 3040s. They are also 3040 pitch. I mean, something along those lines. Uh, but you can see they look quite different. I mean, these are... These have the pointy tips and these one have the sort of 
bullnose tips here. Um, these bullnose tips here are known to generate quite a lot of thrust, but they are also grossly inefficient because you have um, you you generate a lot of drag here in this area. Um, so we have props that are geared more towards efficiency. These are also very light for their size. They're rather low pitch, and all of these design choices in the prop make uh, make it in addition to the larger disc size more geared towards efficiency. The downside is uh, you will notice that if you uh, put a 6S on there and spin these props really high, they are quite low pitch. So your maximum speed will be sort of um, will be sort of limited by the light low inch prop. But that's uh, actually the the only downside you have here. All right, and third factor contributing to the efficiency is the motor design or motor specification and construction. So here we have um, narrow and tall high KV motors, 14 millimeter wide stator, 8 millimeters high, 3750 KV. And here we have a not as a rather flat and wide stator with lower KV. 1950 kV. So 1950 kV is usually a 6S kV, but for long flight times I'm running those on 4S. Still gives me the option to pop a 6S on there and have more power, but these are very efficient with the low kV on a 4S battery. And this rather low uh, kV motor constant, which means my theoretical maximum RPM per volt is rather low, is inversely proportional to the motor constant KT, which is the torque I can get per amp, which in practice then means that the motor will run more efficiently in normal cruising use. So, long story short, the low KV motor is the relatively low KV motor for the prop size is more efficient than the relatively high KV motor for the prop size. Now we have different prop sizes, so we can't really compare KV. Um, but basically here we have a 4S KV running on 4S and here we have a 6S KV running on 4S. This increases the efficiency quite substantially. Then we have different motor constructions. So here on the Brother Hobby motor 2004, we do have, I mean, this one has more poles. I think it has 14 at least. Uh, I don't really remember, but it has more motor poles. So you see there's more, more magnets and more of these, uh, let me get this in focus, more of these windings, while this one has less. This is also something that gears the motor more towards torque and efficiency. Uh, and a nice side effect of the white stator is that we have better airflow and cooling. So as you can see, if I look at this roughly in the direction that the airflow will hit it, we will have quite a lot of air flowing through the copper windings here and the magnets and um, the metal core of the stator. So we'll have pretty good motor cooling while compared to this motor here, it's just it just got a smaller footprint, so less air is going to hit it. It's, the cooling is not going to be as good. We have less air flowing through the motor. And many of the factors that are contributing to um, the internal energy losses or efficiency losses in the motor, which are hysteresis, uh, eddy currents, and the electrical resistance of the copper wire, are at least in the temperature ranges where we are when normal flying and so temperature ranges these motors are operating in are proportional to the temperature. Means the loss in a motor go up proportional to the temperature of the motor. So having cooler motors will make things more efficient. Now, I'm honestly not quite sure how big this effect actually is in practice because when we are only cruising, um, so long range cruising, efficient flying, anyways, we will not get the motors extremely hot. But there is clearly a difference. I tested um, 1805 motors compared to these 2004 motors. And already in that case, you could feel a difference. The 2004 motors came down completely cold, while the 1805 motors were sort of warm. But I mean, we are not talking about gigantic temperature 
uh, to the differences here. We're talking about a couple of dozen of degrees, so I'm not sure how big this effect is, but it's one of the effects contributing to increased efficiency. All right, now enough of the theoretical talking. Let's grab these completely identical lithium ion packs, the two quads, and get outside and see how much flight time we get out of both of them. All right, so let's start off with the Ishin LAL. Let's see how it performs. First thing I notice, it's actually quite quiet in, when idling. So let's get it in the air. So it does move quite nicely. Very smooth. I'm quite surprised. I mean, you can hear it's sort of high pitched 3 inch prop noise. It's a bit more annoying than on a 5 inch, it's a bit louder. What I immediately notice is uh, my battery seems to be sagging a bit more. That's interesting. And cruising speed is quite low and another thing I just noticed is I can see in the DVR the sides of this lens protection thing that is a bit annoying but overall I have to say uh, it's quite pleasant let's try a little punch out and let's not forget I mean I'm flying this with a very heavy battery it's it's not intended usually to have such a heavy battery Oh, some vibration here on a punch out. So I have to say, overall, it feels okay. It's very smooth. I think I could do some very nice cinematic shots with it, but it feels almost cinewhoop like. Um, not very fast. Sort of seems to be struggling a bit. I mean, it's actually quite close to a cinema, basically. Three inch props on something that is now with the Slifem iron pack pretty heavy. But overall, not bad. It's just, um, you can really feel it doesn't like full throttle punch outs. There's not much happening. <laughs> it's pretty slow. But I guess that will probably be different on a lighter battery, which I'm gonna try to to give this a fair chance. I mean this test here is actually about efficiency so let's not linger too much on, on punch outs and high power stuff. But for cruising, um, for probably cinematic cruising, this thing does a pretty decent job I have to say. Okay so I am approaching 3 volts per cell. I'm at 12.8, 12.9. 11 and a half minutes in. I have to say I'm quite surprised at how the Ishin handles. It's way smoother than I expected. That's a positive thing. A uh, negative aspect I noticed is it's also way slower than I expected. Um, it's really pretty slow cruising speed wise. I mean like I mean what you see here is me cruising at more than mid throttle it's pretty slow but also i mean the battery is much heavier than it, what it's uh designed for and i mean again what best describes how this handles is like a cine whoop very cine whoop like so 12.3 volts getting closer to these three volts per cell 12 and a half minutes in all right, we just hit three volts per cell for the first time. So I will land now at 13 minutes and 45 seconds. Okay, so here we go with the five inch exact same thing.
And what I immediately notice is this thing does move way, way faster. I'm also at around mid throttle and it's considerably faster. So when to be fair we did two punch out full throttle with the Ishin. Let's do the same thing with the mini long range. Uh, first to uh, sort of be consistent with the flying and second to see what happens on this heavy 4S pack. So full throttle. Feels pretty similar to the Ishin. To be honest, not a lot is happening. <laughs> not a lot of power. Because I mean, these low KV motors on 4S just feel like you are sort of cutting off the top end of your throttle. One thing I can probably make a hypothesis about is that I would trust this five inch, or I feel like this five inch could carry some additional weight. At least, I mean, a naked GoPro, probably without any issue, a full-size GoPro, which is something um, I doubt would really work on the Ishin. I mean, I didn't bring a GoPro, I can't try. But this one really feels like it could manage some additional load. While on the Ishin, um, it really felt like I was basically already sort of a bit too heavy. So one question uh, that's probably gonna come up is can I still freestyle on those low KV motors and the heavy battery? So let's try this while we're at it. Let's do some flippy floppy stuff. Let's just quickly try. So no problem. Flips and rolls are still pretty easy. Although I don't think it's I mean, it doesn't really feel like it's made for that, but still no problem, as you see. Still flip, flips and rolls, absolutely fine. So let's keep on cruising. All right, we are at 20 minutes, 30 seconds. I'm almost bored out of my mind. Um, Still 3.2 volts per cell. And as you can see, um, one thing I also noticed, this five inch is considerably less noisy than the three inch. At least, I mean, in any case, it's a nicer noise, it's just a lower, when I fly by closely, you can see it's just a low sort of humming noise versus a higher pitched screaming three inch. So way, way better noise. Um, 3.1 volts now, 21 minutes, so we're already over, uh, have around about a 50% increase in flight time and we are not even done yet. 21 minutes, 30 seconds now and I'm just waiting for the voltage to drop to 3 volts per cell so I can land it. I think we'll make it to 22 at least. There's someone uh, playing with an RC car, yes, I have to be a bit careful where I go, but they don't seem to be bothered or scared at all by the quad, which is a good thing. And we just hit 3 volts after Pretty exactly 22 minutes. Oh wait, no, just bounced back. I'm still at 3.1. Okay, 3.0. Time to land. 22 minutes and 17 seconds. All right, so back inside. Time for a conclusion. And we saw around 13 minutes, 45 seconds on the Ishin, and over 22 minutes, 15 seconds on the 5-inch mini long range. So obviously. Uh, flight times are considerably better on the 5 inch. That's uh, roughly a 50% increase uh, from the baseline of the Ishin. Are there any downsides uh, to having these 5 inch props? In my opinion, not really. 
Uh, it's faster, it's more efficient, it does handle very smoothly and very nicely, so you don't have any dis disadvantage um, compared to these three inch props. I would have expected this that this one tends to be wanting to move faster with the higher KV motors and smaller props, but it actually wasn't really very much faster. And I mean, these flight times over 20 minutes, I mean, hardly pushing the lithium ion packs, you can push these down to two volts if you uh, absolutely have to. Over 20 minutes, hardly pushing these packs is really what you want for long range, even if you don't need it. It really gives you a lot of peace of mind to not have to look at your voltage all the time and really have a lot of time um, to focus on your lines, focus on your flying and not wondering whether you're going to make it back now because um, your battery is already getting empty. You really have a lot of time to work with and enjoy your flight. Um, just to close this up, my opinion on the Ishin LIL, if you wonder, I mean, I think this is, um, I mean, the performance really isn't very impressive. Frame construction is okay. I mean, very simple single bottom plate, um, but it's not bad. There's nothing bad about it and it's quite cheap. So I think this is probably interesting if you're a beginner and you want to get into FPV and have a DJI FPV system. I think many people that start off and don't have all the analog gear might uh, directly go to DJI. So this could be interesting for those people who just want a cheap quad to start with that is easy to fly because that it is. In fact, it's very easy to fly. It's not too fast. It's pretty smooth. It's easy to control. So you, as a beginner, you're going to have a good time flying this. And um, I mean, again, it's really cheap. So that's maybe, I think, the intended purpose of this uh, free inch. Apart from that, I mean, it's not efficient enough for long range. It's not fast enough for racing. So really sort of a beginner thing for me. Or if you like, um, with a have a better, heavy battery, if you like the sort of Cinewhoop uh flight feeling it got which is very controlled it's moved for proximity that's one thing it does well but apart from that i think these five inch uh, setups are really superior to a uh, three inch of the same weight and um, more size all right guys i hope you found this interesting and useful um, leave your thoughts below and of course don't forget to hit that subscribe button thanks bye bye